Hello, my name is Robert Gerwin. I'm a neurologist who's been involved in neuromuscular pain management for a considerable part of my clinical career. I'm going to talk about one part of the erector spiny muscles. That is the longissimus thoracis muscles. The longissimus thoracis muscle is a superficial muscle in the erector spiny group. The muscle is comprised of fascicles of muscle that arise in the paraspinal region in the transverse processes uh, close to their origin and have long tendons in the caudal region which extend all the way down to the L2 lumbar region. In the lumbar region the tendons of the longissimus thoracis merge with those of the more lateral iliocostellus muscles to form an aponeurosis that attaches lower down in the lumbar spine and extends over the sacrum. The lumbar, uh, lumbo, uh, lumbar and thoracic paraspinal muscles that make up the longissimus thoracis are a common cause of back pain, particularly of thoracic and lumbar or mid-back pain. They can occur with overload from chronic uh, usage, for example, sitting at the computer for long periods of time without adequate back support, from repeated bending, from trauma, from trunk whiplash, for example. Recalling that in a rear end automobile accident, not only does the neck suffer from a whiplash, but the lower lumbar spine can as well, setting up a problem that may be reflected in the longissimus thoracis muscles. The longissimus thoracis muscle can be examined manually with the patient lying in lateral decubitus or sideline position or in the prone position. One palpates cross fiber, that is perpendicular to the direction of the long axis of the spine, and one can find rather large, long, taut bands that may extend for many vertebral segments. They can extend three, four, six, even eight vertebral segments, or may involve almost the entire thoracic or lumbar region. In addition, they may be segmental. That is, there may be a shorter taut band in one portion of the longissimus thoracis and again in another portion. These trigger points cause pain which may not only be local, but the pain tends to be referred caudally so that Trigger points in the lower thoracic and lumbar region of the longissimus thoracis may present as pain in the gluteal region, and trigger points in the more thoracic, upper thoracic portion of the longissimus thoracis may present as pain in the lower thoracic or lumbar region. In addition to that, the referred pain may be experienced through the body into the anterior portion of the trunk which may be a confusing problem. The trigger point pain may be relatively mild. Trigger points may be present in a so-called latent form that do not cause pain spontaneously. And top bands may be present which are not painful at all. On the other hand, trigger points in the longissimus thoracis muscle may be absolutely incapacitating, preventing the patient from getting up, walking, or even rolling over in bed. They can be inactivated manually or by needling, and they can be, when inactivated, relieved of their pain rather astonishingly quickly. No matter how they are relieved, however, 
the underlying factors which have led to the development of trigger points, assuming that this is not a traumatic event, but they have to be identified and corrected. Thank you.